Okay, something that I work on, something that I help my students with is release. Okay, so what I would uh, classify as a roll release is where the right hand's uh, crossing over, rolling over the left. That's just what I call a, a roll. Flip, I would see something more like this. Okay, that's what I call a flip. The roll release is like a closing mechanism. And what we don't want is that happening right at the last second to try to close that face. It can lead to a lot of issues, a lot of inconsistencies. What would be better is if we had the face a little bit more square earlier in the downswing. So we don't have to uh, roll it down an impact. So let me show you an example. This is what I see a lot with players, amateurs. The face is open. You can see it's tilted this way on the downswing. That's really open to the arc. And then if I come down without using my roll, you can see the face now. It's like 45 degrees relative to the target line. Now, the only way for me to get that square to the target with this amount of time is to quickly roll the hands. That releases the shaft, I might stand up. So a lot of issues there with leaving that face open deep into the downswing right before impact. What you should work on if that's you is getting the face angle a little bit more toe up or slightly tilted down earlier in the downswing. As you come down to the ball in that position, you're gonna see right before impact, my face might be 10, 20 degrees open relative to the uh, target line. So now from here, I can trust the arc that it's on, start to finish my turn, allow the club head to start to arc back to the left, which naturally creates a closing effect on the face. So watch this. If I swing it back and through, I'm not rolling the face whatsoever. I'm just keeping the face square to the arc that it's on. So it's kind of like a putting stroke. If you get a nice natural arc, it has a closing effect, uh, effect on the face. If you were putting way into out, you would have to compensate and close the face. Or if you're putting way out to in, you sort of have to leave it open. So if you come down, your face is toe up or a little bit toe down on the way down to the ball. So now right before impact, it's just a little bit open relative to the target, but it's square to the arc. And then I just keep turning and allow this path to start to arc back to the left. So it's on a neutral path with a square face relative to the arc. You don't need to use your hands coming into impact. You can just keep moving through hips and chest. And now we have very consistent impact. It's more of a body release type of swing, less handsy swing. So for good players that have a lot of speed, that's a great swing to work on. Players that don't have a lot of speed, you might want to have them uh, have more release with the hands. Why? Because releasing with the hands does add speed. Okay, so if I do nothing with my body, I could still generate a ton of speed there from my hands. So slow speed players need a little bit more of that. But players that are stronger, and they could take advantage of uh, more body motion going through without the need of hands. I highly recommend working on a <clears throat> square face earlier in the downswing. So how do you do that? There's some things you can do in your wrist positions. You can get them flat if you have a neutral to weak grip. If you have a super strong grip, you can't get flat because that thing's now more shut. So neutral, weak grip, get more flat here. Make sure you're flatting uh, coming down. Okay, the other thing is just making sure that you're not doing too much of this in transition. So this would be pronating this lead arm. This is something I do in my transition. So I start to shallow the shaft. So, but now I get the face really open and then I have to really square it coming at impact. So I get a little handsy. So the feeling I have is like my hands are starting to supinate earlier on the way down. Now that's almost like a steepening effect on the shaft, but since I already shallow it on the way down, it's just a little less shallow and it gets the face. You can see that, right? So if I'm shallow, 
open or if I really shallow the face, uh, shaft opens, if I start to see, steepen it a little bit, but still in a good position, I can get that face a little bit more toe up, <clears throat> even without trying to flex the lead wrist uh, to, to close the face that way. <clears throat> okay, so some drills, guys, would be just going down uh, hip height, shaft parallel, kind of feel like that uh, face tilting this way, matching my back line here. So you can work a little pump down to make sure that face is square earlier. Just try to get a feel for what that's like. And then go ahead and hit a shot that's going to really feel close coming down here. Now, if you have a roll release and you're working on this, it's going to be more close here. And then if you come down to the ball and you still have your roll, this thing's going way left. All right, but that's because you got the new pattern with the old pattern. And so you have yet to figure out impact to match up the new pattern with a new pattern at impact. So you're going to really have to feel like you're closing it early, closing early, and then coming through, turn. No hands. So if we close it early, come through. Look at my finish here. My forearms pretty close to level. What we don't want to do is be in closing early and then right forearm on top. So you could like make sure you put a shaft on your forearms here. Try to feel more level. Maybe even a little right side lower shaft tilting like this way in the follow through. So you can see like this instead of this. So this would be a rolling release. Right side higher. So close it early. Here, just work some pumps. Okay, get the feel of that. You can look at it if you want to. Check it out. Then eyes on the ball, eyes on the ground, and then just start to feel it. You don't have to like throw it like I'm doing. So just come down. Make sure it's like there, okay? On the way through. Once we get it here, come through. Right side a little lower than left side. Right forearm a little underneath left forearm. That face is real open, so it will naturally close some. You don't want to like this though. So that would be right side, higher than left. So this is no good when we're working on closing early. We want something more like this. Okay, kind of like perpendicular to my spine here. It's gonna end up being more like this when you really look at it on video. So that's the feel. <clears throat> okay guys, hope that helps. Helps you understand how to square it earlier so you don't need to roll the hands at impact because that's the last second compensation we don't want to do that all right